are discussing the India Australia virtual summit that was held between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Australian counterpart Scott Morrison. We see that both the countries have also developed their relationships especially in the last few years. We see the depth of these partnership has really grown. Dr. Nine, when you see the summit that has happened today and the two leaders discussing a range of issues, how far do you think this strengthens the bilateral relationship. Well, you are quite right when you told that this relationship is evolving and this relationship is really evolving over the years. We can remember, recollect when there was very tense relationship between India and Australia, especially after the Pokhran explosions. Different Prime Minister, including the current Prime Minister Modi, had really worked hard to elevate the relationship to the comprehensive strategic partnership level in 2020. But before that also in 2009, the strategy, it was of course elevated to the strategic partnership level. So it has been growing, it is becoming comprehensive and now several areas have been discussed and where both countries are going to work in the coming years, in the coming decades, you may, you may say, because it is a long-term partnership. The long-term partnership is not developed only for months, or for a couple of years. It is developed for decades and sometimes even for centuries. So I think it is a really important relationship of Asia, of the Asia Pacific, you can say, or you can say Indo-Pacific. We also see that the Prime Minister, while speaking at the open session of the India-Australia Virtual Summit, said that the mechanism which will be set up for the annual summit will help in the regular review of the relationship. And the Prime Minister also thanked his Australian counterpart for the initiative to return the ancient Indian artifacts which he had also inspected ahead of this summit. Dr. Nine, when we see the fact that Australia has returned the artifacts and this means a lot to India given the historical significance especially, how do you think this gesture also helps in taking this bilateral relationship forward? It's very important gesture, I would say, and it has got symbolic value. And it, again, just how I talked about relationship, our relationship or the bilateral relationship has got implications, has got significance for centuries. Now we can really collect. For centuries, our cultural treasure was plundered. It was taken away, the artifacts and several our heritage items were taken away by different imperialist powers, different marauders, and they showed it in the international market. They even put it in their museum. So the governmental level action has been done to put it in the museum. Let's just imagine. So now at least the world is realizing when you are signing agreements to preserve culture of any other country, not to hurt culture of any other country, then really you have to return, you have to pay respect to your partner, your friend or any other member of the international community. So not only Australia, from other parts of the world also, we are receiving our cultural artifacts which all these artifacts are ours and we are again putting them in their places where they belong to. So in that context, it is really relevant and it is very symbolic and it is highly significant. But one more thing I would just like to point out that this is not just return of the artifact, which is useful in the India-Australia context. In fact, India and Australia are going to work on art and culture in different aspects and they have allotted funding for that purpose. And in fact, one of the initiatives of the two countries is Australia Researcher Cooperation Hub in India. And this is one of the important items. This is one of the important area, you can say, of the bilateral educational cooperation between the two countries, where they are going to strengthen and increase bilateral research collaboration and showcase the research excellence of both countries. There are many other items also. There are many other issues and topics, but working on art and culture is also included in this initiative. So this is how it is very significant and this is how I read it. It has got very great symbolic value. Nine, we also saw that the Australian Prime Minister talked about the threat of the changes that we are seeing in the Indo-Pacific region and he spoke in the context of Russia's aggression which we are seeing currently in Ukraine and the Australian Prime Minister he, in an apparent reference to China's aggressive posture in the region, said that the call by Quad leaders to discuss Russia's unlawful invasion of Ukraine also gave the opportunity to discuss the consequences of the terrible events for our own region in the Indo-Pacific. The question here is basically, 
has two parts. So one is what we see happening in Ukraine and how India and Australia can probably form a unified response to what is unfolding in Ukraine. And the second, of course, is what we have seen in the Indo-Pacific. And what we have seen is basically the reference to China and its very aggressive posturing there. Let me start with the first issue. That is the developments in Ukraine. This is what you can say Russian military action in Ukraine or they can say operation in Ukraine. India has not condemned it, but India has not approved it. This should be kept in mind. It is not that we have been supporting the use of violence in international relations, unnecessarily illegal use of violence in any conduct of relationship between the two countries. So India has disapproved it. It should be seen in that context. Second, India has also stated in different international platforms, it has stated on the United Nations Security Council, it has stated in the General Assembly and elsewhere also, that territorial unity and sovereignty of a country should be maintained, it should not be disturbed. So we respect territorial integrity and sovereignty of a country. So that is also highly relevant in the context of what is happening in Ukraine. We are also in touch with different stakeholders, different partners who are involved in this activity, in this operation, you can say, in this act of violence, whatever you like to call it. And we want that it should be ended as quickly or as soon as possible. In fact, India and Australia all have got the same objectives, the same idea. There could be differences of wordings about the description of the action which is taking place there. But overall, we have got great understanding that the rule of law should prevail. And we also want that the cultural unity which we just talked about at the end, territorial sovereignty and territorial integrity of a country should not be discussed. So we are very much there. We also want that what we just discussed about the development of people, the growth of people should not be affected because of some act. So in that context, we are also discussing about energy security vis-a-vis Russia also. And more importantly, we are also concerned that any weapon which can have devastating consequences should not be used. So this is about Ukraine. Now coming back to the Indo-Pacific region, and which has led to the formation of acquired by the four countries, Japan, United States, Australia, and India. And we also want that more and more partners should join it. And what we want here, it is not that we are simply interested in containing China or any other country. We want that rule of law should prevail, freedom of navigation should prevail and it should not be hampered and there should be peaceful navigation or peaceful trade happening in the region and people should live peacefully there and there should be development and growth and if any country is doing that, the all countries should speak in one single voice. So this is our understanding about Indo-Pacific. So again, when we are working with Australia, we are working again in various areas. The relationship is multidimensional in nature. We are talking about high technology. We are talking about vaccines. We are talking about health. We are talking about maritime security. We are also talking about there should not be damage to environment. There should not be transactions of hazardous materials in the oceans, and there should be well-protected sea lanes whereby trade can take place easily. So these are the issues we both countries have found that we can work together, whether in multilateral forums or bilaterally. We also saw that the Prime Minister spoke of the remarkable progress made by the two countries in various sectors. The Prime Minister specifically said that trade and investment, defense and security, education and innovation science and technology. In all these sectors, we have very close cooperation. The Prime Minister also went on to refer to the importance of the economic partnership. Dr. Nain, first, if you could just talk a little about the trade and investment and also the Prime Minister's emphasis on the importance of an early conclusion of the Comprehensive Economic Cooperation Agreement, which he also said will be crucial for our economic relations, economic revival and economic security. India is the eighth largest trade partner of Australia. The trade in goods and services and it runs into several billions of dollars and 3% of the Australian trade in 2019 and 2020. So we are doing quite well but not very satisfactory. So what has Australian government done? They have constituted a committee and that committee has given a report and we discussed when Australian government came to India, they discussed about how to increase the economic relationship between the two countries and how we can make it multidimensional in nature, not just relating to one area. Like just now we are knowing that about 1500 crore package of initiatives has been discussed in this meeting and there are several sectors 
where the two countries are really going to work together starting from critical clean technology to critical minerals to skills defense exchanges defense cooperation innovation skill metri scholarships there are areas which have been marked and already india and australia ceo forum is active treasury niti aayog economic policy dialogue is active also we have got civil nuclear cooperation since 2014 and it has passed through different phases and we are doing reasonably well what i had just mentioned in, in my first segment that australia researcher cooperation hub or arch india which we are generally talking about it has also got several areas whereby we can work together starting from advanced materials to agriculture but i'm trying to say that the relationship is not only becoming comprehensive in nature it is becoming multi dimensional in nature and we are trying to emphasize the importance of all the areas where both countries can work together to really develop the two economies which both economies have suffered i will not say great setback but yes of course affected by corona and many other problems so now we together may really propel the two economies quite well thank you thank you